there are new checkboxes available in Excel 365. And these checkboxes not only are a lot easier to insert and format, but they also look a lot nicer and more modern. So check out what we have in the worksheet. You can see that I have a little table here that just lists out some tasks. We have a task number, we have task name, the description, and then we have a status column and a checkbox column. And the way that I've set this up is that if I was to select one of these checkboxes to check off a task, notice what happens. Immediately in the status column, we get complete and the rest of the task grays out with a strike through. So I can go through marking off my tasks and everything is nice and automated. Also check out how nice these checkboxes look. You can pretty much customize them to be whatever color you like. So this is what we're going to do in this lesson. I'm going to show you how to set something up like this because it is pretty simple and just combines checkboxes with conditional formatting. I'm also going to show you the sequence formula again at the beginning of this lesson just to number these tasks and I'll tell you why in a moment. So let's clear out our data and start from the beginning. So the first thing that we're going to do here is we're going to add task numbers. Now I'm going to do this using the sequence formula. And the reason why I'm going to use sequence is that sequence is great because it means that if anything changes, for example, if we were to delete out an entire task, then the numbering will automatically update. With some of the other methods that you can use to add sequential numbers in a column, it won't do that. And then you have to go through and manually edit all the cells, which is very tedious. So let's go to cell B5. We're going to use equals sequence. Now, the number of rows, I only have a few rows, so I could technically count them. But remember, we can always get Excel to do it for us by utilizing count A. So I wanted to count the number of rows. I'm just going to use this column just here, like so. Close the bracket, comma. How many columns do we want to fill down? Well, only one. We want to start at task number one and we want to go up by one each time. So now when we close off the bracket and hit enter, we should find we have a nice list of sequential numbers. And just to show you what I mean, if I was to right click and delete out one of the tasks, you can see that all of the tasks renumber themselves. Now I'm going to click on undo to put that back again. Now the next step of this process is to add in our checkboxes in column F. And these are the new checkboxes. So this is pretty cool. Let's go to the insert tab. Notice in cell controls, we now have this checkbox option. Now, if you come to the insert tab and you don't see this, it just means that it hasn't been rolled out to your copy of Excel 365. These things in general get rolled out in stages. So make sure that you keep checking your updates because you should have this very soon if you don't already. Now, what we can do here is select the cells where we want to add a checkbox and simply click on checkbox. How much easier is that than using form controls? Now, these checkboxes look a little bit different. They have rounded corners. The default is to show them in black, but something that we can do with these that we couldn't do with the old checkboxes is we can change the color of them. So if I want to change these to match this kind of pink theme that I have going on, I just need to select them, go to the home tab and we need to change the font color, which seems a little bit strange, but this is what controls the color of these checkboxes. So I'm going to make these a plummy pink color like so. And when we check a checkbox, notice that the true or false output, that's exactly the same as the old form controls now appears in the formula bar. So you can see true when I deselect, it says false. So a couple of differences with these checkboxes. So now that we have these, we want them to actually do something to our task list. Now, there's two things that I want it to do here. I want it to output a status of complete when it's checked. And I just want a blank cell when it's unchecked. And then I want it to kind of gray out and strike through the task once it's complete. So let's deal with the status first of all, because this requires us to input a formula into column E. Now we're going to use an if formula, because remember, when you're dealing with outputs of true and false, we would use an if. So my logical test is going to be, is basically checking if this cell is true or false. We don't need to say F5 equals true or F5 equals false. We can simply select the cell because the output of an if is true or false. So I'm going to do a comma 
and we're just going to say if the value is true, so if it's checked, we want to see the word complete in the cell. If it's false, as in the box is unchecked, we just want a blank. Let's close the bracket, hit enter, and I'm going to copy this formula down. You should see all blanks in here if this is working correctly because we don't have any checkboxes selected. But as soon as I select something, you can see that those change to complete in the status column. So this is working exactly as I want it to work. Now I'm going to check the first one just so you can see this as we do it. Because the second thing that I want to happen here is that when we check a checkbox, I want the status to change to complete, but I also want the task to kind of fade out to grey with a strike through. So we need to select all of our tasks and apply some conditional formatting. And we're going to create a new rule. So what we're going to say here, we're going to use a formula and we're going to say equals if this cell and notice by default it gives it absolute referencing and in this case if I was to leave this as absolute it wouldn't work. So we need to press F4 a couple of times because for this to work as we want it to we just need to lock the column and not the row. That's what's going to allow our formatting to travel across the actual row. So if E5 is equal to complete so if it can see the word complete in there, we want to apply formatting to the selected cell range. So I'm going to go to the font tab and we're going to gray out the actual task and we're going to give it a strike through like so. Let's click on OK and OK again and check it out. You can see that that's been applied to the first one because we've checked the checkbox. And if I now go through, you'll see as I check things off, we get this really nice effect of them graying out and being completed. So this is a really nice way to utilize checkboxes. Now, just a final couple of points to know about these checkboxes. If you want to delete them, you actually have to select them and then go to the clear button just here. And you need to choose clear all. You can't select the cell and press delete. It doesn't work. You must clear them. If you're not a subscriber, click down below to subscribe so you get notified about similar videos we upload. To see the full course that this video came from, click over there. And click over there to see more videos from Simon Says It.